In what might have been the most challenging season in NFL history, there were plenty of worthy candidates for Coach of the Year. Perhaps none more so than the Browns' Kevin Stefanski. The cardboard cutouts, it was just strange, it was eerie. It literally felt like a JV high school game. In his first season heading up the varsity, Stefanski ended Cleveland's 18-year postseason drought. An amazing story! They're going to the playoffs! Few first-year head coaches have had more success than Stefanski. In 1989, George Seifert replaced the legendary Bill Walsh. Only the third coach in history to go to the Super Bowl his first year as a head coach. His 49ers finished 14 and 2 before going on to win Super Bowl 24. Don't get rid of me that hard. Are you <laughs> Jim Caldwell's Colts started 2009 with 14 straight victories and also reached the Super Bowl. The Colts win! They win! No quitting this team. No win. Great fight, great hearts, like champions. 2019's Vunderkin, Green Bay's Matt LaFleur, nearly matched their win total with 13 victories as a rookie head coach. So this is what they were talking about all year about this new offense, huh? <laughs> we kind of like it. Yeah! Know what else these men have in common? None were named Coach of the Year. <laughs> what are they talking about? Last season, John Harbaugh earned the accolade. Right now, today, who's got it better than us? Nobody! Who's got it better than us? Nobody! Eight years earlier, Jim Harbaugh took home the award, making them the only brothers ever to be so recognized. Be good today. Okay. Proud of you. Really proud of you. However, neither Harbaugh won the Super Bowl at the end of his Coach of the Year season, which, as it turns out, isn't the least bit unusual. Good job. Okay. Great job. Good luck the rest of the way. Yeah. Only 13 times in 62 years has the Coach of the Year led his team to an NFL title. So it all comes down to this. All right, guys. Last play of the game. Since 1987, it's only happened twice. Dick Vermeil with the Rams in 1999. He dives for the end zone. No, no, that's it. We won. Woo that's the game. It's over. It's over. We're world champions. And in 2003, when Bill Belichick hoisted the Lombardi Trophy. Speaking of Lombardi. Alone, Lombardi resuscitates a disorganized, depressed, dying team. He force feeds the Packers with his will to work, his demand for discipline, his relentless drive to win. Despite winning five titles in nine years during the 1960s, the legendary leader of the pack garnered only one Coach of the Year award. That was for his rookie season in 1959 when Green Bay went 7-5 and, and missed the playoffs. Snap of the ball, Paul Horning off the right side, cuts at the five, touchdown. The ball game's over, the Green Bay Packers have won the championship. In 1961 and 62, Lombardi's Packers beat Ali Sherman's Giants in the NFL championship game. Both seasons, Sherman was voted coach of the year. What the hell's going on out here? When it comes to Green Bay and coach of the year, Lombardi was honored the same number of times as Lindy Infante, who won the award in 1989. By the way, that Packers team didn't make the playoffs either. But perhaps it turns out being the man responsible for sparking a dynasty means little to voters. Wait a minute, just, just wait a second. Bill Walsh's 49ers struck gold in the 80s. Three Super Bowl victories in the 1980s. But the genius behind the West Coast offense was only honored once in 1981, the year he won his first Super Bowl. Bill Walsh and a team that confounded pro football observers throughout the year. 
Tom Landry won two Super Bowls and posted an NFL record 20 straight winning seasons. Pitch out, Newhouse goes left, pulls up, wants the pass, fires it deep for Goldie Richard. Caught, touchdown! And there he goes, Landry, still calm, still collected, will put on another ring. However, the man in the funny hat only won Coach of the Year for his first winning season in 1966. And I'll give you one guess who he lost to in the NFL title game that year. Rolls out to the right. He's going to be nailed. Here's the hit. It's intercepted in the end zone. Need a hint? His name rhymes with Mimps Sambardi. World champ, number one. Chuck Knoll led the Steelers to four Super Bowl victories in six years during the 1970s. Chuck Knoll, they were about the worst team in pro football when he took over. Guess how many times he was honored as Coach of the Year? Zero. For the years Knoll was being carried off the field victorious, Don Coriel, Ted Marchabroda, Jack Patera, and Jack Pardee carried home the hardware. While Chuck Knoll was shut out, Chuck Knox cashed in. That's the way to work. Get ready to be the best. Be the best, you got to pay the price, Butch. Knox won the award three times as head coach of three different franchises, the 1973 Rams, the 1980 Bills, and the 1984 Seahawks. After 22 seasons, Knox walked away without having reached the Super Bowl. He also retired with as many Coach of the Year awards as Hall of Famers Vince Lombardi, Tom Landry, Hank Stram, Chuck Knoll, John Madden, Bill Walsh, and Tony Dungy combined. Knox's trifecta of Coach of the Year awards ties him with Bill Belichick for second most all time trailing only Don Shula, who has four. And it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Guess it's tough for voters to deny the winningest coach of all time. So football fans, if your coach isn't among the finalists for Coach of the Year at NFL Honors, don't lose heart. It just means you might be heading to a parade the following week to honor him.